you did some weighted ball research recently. And right. uh, I'm sure it's going to go through some different processes of, of peer review and all that. Because you're, a, I mean, was this like the 900,000th research study you've done? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. We, you know, we we try to do research the right way. Like, you know, so you got to be careful with some of the data that you read, right? Yeah, ha- it has to be unbiased. It has to have control groups. It has to go through an IRB to assure that your methodology is sound and safe and and peer reviewed. You know, you got to be careful with uh, with what you read nowadays. You know, true research is actually challenging to perform. It's it's hard to control all the variables to make sure that you are you are you are specifically testing something, right? It's 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 challenging. So it's not just reporting data it's actually about you know how you how you research data i think that's that's the the big part so um yeah we're doing um we have a couple of phase studies of weighted balls that we're in the middle of but you know again we teamed up with our old friends dr andrews dr fleissig asmi um and then we teamed up with modus global um, the people that have that sleeve with the accelerometer and gyroscope uh, built into the sleeve um it measures all the stress on the elbow and and stuff like that so Phase one, we just wanted to say like, all right, what was the before and after effects of a weighted ball program? So we built out a six week program. Um, and again, you know, we kind of compared everything on on the market. We kind of we have like a program that we use and we have a program that, you know, I mean, heck, we've been doing weighted balls for, you know, 20 years, probably, um, you know, to some capacity in the rehab process and everything. And, you know, uh, Coop's original research on four and six ounce uh, over and under load training, you know, th- th- these things aren't new, but. I think what's happened in in this era now, we're so focused on velocity. People are saying like, "Oh, well, if a six ounce ball increases your velocity, like what what would a two pound ball do? <laughs> you know, yeah. like that must triple it, right? That must be amazing. You know, so I, I think we're getting carried away, and and the programs out there are 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 ahead of the research, so we don't truly know what's happening. So. In our first phase, and we just kind of finished up a, another group of kids that went through it, you know, we essentially took high school age kids and we intentionally didn't do the elite level kids, right? We had some good kids in the group, but we also had some kids that were, you know, JV, you know, trying to get on the, the varsity team. Like we wanted this to be real with the kids. So they did a six week program. They, they kind of did, you know, like a progression of, of uh, you know, kneeling rockers, running guns. Uh, and we used anywhere from two ounce to two pound balls and just and just slowly kind of grew that program over the six weeks. What we found was weighted balls are effective. Right. So the kids gain velocity. But, you know, about 85 percent of the kids gain velocity. So 50 percent didn't. Right. You know, that's that's the kind of the first thing I, I always bring up. These things aren't perfect for everyone. Right. So 50 percent of the kids didn't. But, you know, that's a ton. You know, so kids went up about four percent in their velocity, which which is great. But we actually already knew that. So that's not the new science. Right. Like yeah. we've known that for 20, 30 years that weighted balls are effective. We still don't know why. And we still don't know the long term results. So the other thing we did is we also looked at mechanically, we looked at their arm speed and we looked at the stress on their ligament before and after a program. But then we also looked at their physical characteristics. We looked at their strength and the range of motion of their shoulder before and after this program. And essentially what we found was arm strength does not go up. Arm speed does not go up. The stress on the elbow didn't change either. So that we thought that was a great finding. But you know, those sometimes you hear people say things like, "Oh, it's building arm strength. It's building arm speed." It doesn't, right? So we proved that it actually didn't, right? Uh, it, it, some people say stuff like neuromuscular patterning. I mean, that's just a junk phrase that means nothing, right? So I, I don't even know how you define that. So you know, again, <laughs> it, all those things mean nothing, right? So other than velocity went up, which is great. We found one thing that kids lay back actually increased. So what happens is their shoulder external rotation went up on average about five degrees after a six week program. And that is scary. That's, that's an issue. So what we're finding is we know that the more layback you have, the more velocity you get. So I think this is the first study that kind of shows maybe the effectiveness of a weighted ball program is because we're stretching kids out into external rotation. But this doesn't happen in a good way over six weeks. Like something structurally is kind of breaking, you know, for us to kind of to uh-huh. get to that increased range. So we had we have about almost a 30 percent injury rate that we're working on. So it's about 25 to 30 percent injury rate. Most people don't get hurt during the program. We only had one or two. Right. But the next summer, we followed these kids over the spring and summer. And again, we had a control group that did not perform this. The control group had no injuries. 
And the weighted ball group had about a 25% give or take injury rate that they did this next season. And these are the big injuries. We're seeing growth plate fractures. We're seeing Tommy John's. We're seeing lat tears, pec tears. Heck, I saw a kid that fractured a rib. Uh, I mean, I, I've never seen injuries like this before. It's crazy, <laughs> you know? So yeah. what, what we're finding is the kids that got injured had the most amount of, of layback of external rotation of their shoulder. Some kids had about 10 degrees increase in external rotation. So what we're doing is we're creating more layback. We're creating more instability of the shoulder. And we're probably doing it by having some some issues with their capsule, their labrum, maybe their subscap and their lat, like the type of things we're starting to see. So essentially what we found in this program is they work but we are definitely overdosing. And that's kind of like our main phase. We don't know the correct dosage yet, right? And right now it's like, it's like that old Seinfeld joke. You know, I, I'm probably dating myself here, but <laughs> you know, the, the whole like, you know, like I, I want maximum strength. So figure out whatever kills me and just take a little bit off, right? And, <laughs> and that's what we're doing. But unfortunately, these kids, once they found out what killed them, they're already in trouble, right? Yeah. So I tell this good story because this is a kid, local college with us, came to see me his shoulders killing him i'm like all right well, what's going on he's like ah my shoulders kill me i can't i can't throw i can't even pick up a ball i'm like all right well you know uh, you know yada 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 we do an exam all that stuff I'm like what did you do different this winter it's like oh i've got on an aggressive weighted ball program all winter i'm like oh good how'd it go he's like great this is the best my arms ever felt and i'm like wait you just said your arms hurt and you can't pick up your arm this is the best your arms ever felt because you can't pitch right now he's like yeah but i gained five miles i'm like right but you, but you can't pitch right now. You're injured. He's like, yeah, but I gained five miles. I'm like, I, I don't think you're getting it. <laughs> so, so we had that. So it's funny. So I've now worked, worked with this kid. I published this in an article on my site like a year and a half ago. I've been working with this kid since. Right. And he, he finally texts me like, like that's something he did great this season. And he texts me, he goes, all right, you're right. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, you know, he's, he did a good job. So, yeah. So the, the concept of this, of this first phase of study is weighted balls are effective. We know that we can, we can use them here, but we have to use them in the right person we have to individualize the program we have to monitor it right and we have to really just just scrutinize if the, this person's the right person for it so I, I think we have a definitive yes and a definitive no now on who should be doing weighted balls the definitive no is the skeletally mature that's to me that's a that's a big no-no the definitive yes is probably that six-year free agent that's you know 26 and they're about to be out of baseball if they don't gain a little more velocity if look if you want to assume the risk and do that go nuts i fully support it and i will help you right but you have to understand that there's there's some inherent risk with that but the kid that's 14 or 16 or even 18 that's buying these programs that's non-individualized that doesn't take their mechanics into effect that just has them do random balls i mean to me that's so disadvantageous um we always say there's four ways to increase velocity there's four buckets right the first bucket is age and maturity so as a coach you get this right but for every for every inch you grow and for every year you age your velo goes up 1.5 miles per hour that's been studied that's that's research okay so again you want to gain eight miles an hour sure grow a few inches in a couple of years and you just went up eight miles an hour your coach is probably going to take all the credit right but <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> but it's because you grew you got bigger you matured Right. So age and maturity is number one. Two is a good strength and conditioning program. You have to have, you know, good leg strength, good rotary power, like good linear power, like all, all the things we talk about in the baseball strength and conditioning. Three is a good arm care program. Right. So we always say the legs generate the power, the core transfers the power and the arm dissipates the, the power. And you got to kind of put that together. So you have to have a strong shoulder, which most kids have never even heard of. Right. They haven't done any of that. And then finally, four is you have to have good mechanics and then you can get on throwing programs to enhance your velocity. But right now, everybody wants to jump to step four without those first three steps. And essentially what we're saying is they're trying to frost the cake, but they haven't baked it yet. And that's kind of our that's our that's our big thing that we're kind of finding with these with these kids is they're jumping corners. They're not baking their cake before they frost it with these advanced programs. So that's kind of that's kind of what we found with our our weighted ball research. There's definitely a use for them, but we're definitely overdosing at this point. So again, we won't point fingers or anything like that, or you know say anything. But like again, like you know we got you know reports of like schools with like six Tommy Johns on their roster, right? I got one particular school. Let's we'll just to say is in the the northern half of America, <laughs> so we can't we can't uh, mm -hmm. point them down. But literally in the last few weeks. Three Tommy Johns, right? Two lat tears, 
and an anterior capsule tear, which is the kiss of death, you're done, right? And that's a, that's all one school. So like, when, I, don't, I just don't know when we're going to make this adjustment and pivot, you know? So we're just blindly applying these programs and putting every kid on the program. It's just so disadvantageous. 